Um, I'm trying to think. What else? I mean, everything else is just just lore, you know? It's time to just like sit down and read some lore, I guess. That's all there is to do. I feel like. Doo -doo -doo. I don't know. I can also listen to music. What's some music I can listen to? Which song? I don't know. Some relaxing music, maybe? I don't know which one's relaxing, though. Most of them seem like battle music. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, that's the CEO song that we, ha we heard before. What's this one? Just leave that song in the background, I guess. Um, let's see. I guess I think unless let's see. Unless, uh, again, almost 100 percent everything except unit data, which is again just like some rare spawns that I'll probably not get. It's kind of tedious to just make them spawn and kill them. And fishing, which I don't know, probably not gonna do. It's just fishing. I mean. I would do it if there was like a special reward yet. I don't know, like I don't know, you unlock the super fish weapon, but you, you don't. So, as far as I know, anyway, you don't unlock anything special. It's just fishing. So I think I'm just gonna read the weapon stories. I think, well, I think I'll, I'll just read all of them. Why not? Bare fist. Is there any stories for this one? No. Okay. Just, just, just hands. Um. I guess. Well. Yeah, we'll just go in order. There's a lot of weapons though. But the weapon stories are not that long. They're just like little small sentences you unlock every time you upgrade the weapon. So Faith, I didn't really use this one. This is like a very normal katana. A blade once held by an attendant who cared deeply for his lord. Unlike his loyalty, its blade is unbent. Mm. In the capital of a distant east, oh, well, this one's pretty long, but uh, in the capital of a distant eastern land, there lived a poet who was devoted to his art. Uh, but his words failed to touch the hearts of the people; he could make no profit from them. Soon, his life became unbearably hard. Seeing the limits of his talent, the poet chose to abandon the pen and work the land instead. Soon, his lily-white skin began to grow dark, and his once dark, uh, or rather, his once frail body became sinewy and tough. He eventually married a kind woman, and several years later, they had a child. As the peaceful, uneventful days went on, the man began to feel that there could be no greater happiness in life. Or so the poet wrote before he put down his pen, swallowed the paper whole, and prayed that the next life might turn out so well. He then took faith, already stained with the blood of another, and plunged it deep into his chest. Well, that was a twist ending. Um, again, I, well, I don't know. I, is this also a reference to some like prequel, or is just his own story? I have no idea. Weird. Okay, he committed seppuku. All right. Here's an iron pipe, a rusty pipe covered in vital fluids and machine life forms. What's this story? Um, Dad, if you're cold, I can give you my hat. You are the best father in the world after all. Dad, if you're hungry, you can have my cookie. You're my favorite person in the world after all. Dad, if you're scared, I can sleep by your side. You are my closest friend in the world, after all. So please don't go anywhere, all right, Dad? Don't leave your Yona all alone. Okay? Hmm. I think... Yeah, okay. I think I know this reference. This is from Nier. Again, I never played through the entire Nier, but I've, I've seen some of the beginning. I think this is a Nier reference. So there you go. Nier reference. I think that's also... I think that's a pipe you use in the beginning, maybe? I don't know. Uh, beast, beast bane. Okay, beast jaw motif, short and thin. What's this? Once upon a time, there were three princesses. The middle princess wasn't very bright, but was renowned by all as a great beauty. Once she came of age, she was married off to the king of a neighboring nation. The neighboring king adored his new wife and treasured her looks above all else. He gave the middle princess six new dresses and eight fresh flowers every day, and his love caused her beauty to shine all the more. The middle princess uh, did all she could to remain beautiful for her king, but she knew time would eventually catch up to her, as it did for all. So after much hard thought, she developed a cunning plan. 
the middle princess had herself stuffed and mounted so she could remain beautiful for all time. The king wept joyful tears at the sight, but alas, two years later, war broke out, and her body was crushed under the rubble of the castle. Okay, okay, all right. These are weird stories, but all right. You know, she just stuffed herself. Okay. Human taxidermy. Phoenix dagger. You know, I imagine. Well, let's see. Uh, I was thinking like maybe because some of these weapons are kind of related in its motif. So the beast bane is also related to the beast lord. You know, all these different weapons have the like similar categories. Uh, but it's kind of hard to like keep it all on track. So I, yeah, I was thinking like either follow the motif or just go down in order. I think I'll just go down in order. Because otherwise I'll probably lose track of where I am and which one I've already read. The Phoenix Dagger. Ceremonial implement. Made from Phoenix feathers. The girl lay there on the day of her wedding. Her parents and beloved were dead. And she herself had been violated in front of their corpses. Hmm. As she swore to kill those who had done this terrible deed, a shining songbird appeared. Allow me to grant your wish, said the bird. Wish upon this dagger and never forget this hatred that you feel. The girl grasped the weapon and spat out a ter tearful curse. I vow not to forget. Please, give them a painful death. Okay. Time passed and eventually she got her revenge. Years later, when she was an old woman, the songbird appeared anew. What of your vow? it asked. But she did not understand and come to think of it, think of it what became of her beloved dagger. That night, bandits broke into her house, assaulted her daughter, and murdered her grandchild. The songbird then reappeared with a single question. How long will your hatred burn this time? Okay. Another twisted story. Alright. I guess I assume most of these wep weapon stories are like that. Again, again, the theme of the game is just, it's never a happy ending, is, is there? Um, cycle of revenge, alright. Like it's weird. It's a weird story because like it's a cycle of revenge, but also it's kind of like perpetrated by this supernatural bird, I guess. Um, ancient overlord. All right. Long ago, a cruel lord used his sword on his own subjects in the vain attempt to attain immortality. All right. Classic. One day, a young girl's village was sacked by bandits. To protect her family, she took up a dagger her father had found in the mountains and killed one of them. An act that shocked her family, but. The bandits fled, never to return. Five years later, then ten, then twenty, though the family she protected began to grow old, the girl never aged. Eventually, the other villagers began to shun her. With no one to turn to, she finally left her village and began to wander the earth, visiting many strange lands in the process. As the years passed, her skill and fame as a master sword fighter grew to legend. Eternal life. A powerful weapon and boundless experience, she used these talents to become queen of a nation. And yet, there was emptiness in her life. She still desired the kindness her family denied her after that fateful day. Hmm. Okay. It's a weapon that makes you immortal. Interesting. Well, I guess interesting also the details has his own backstory that is separate from the actual weapon story. I guess that's the origin of the weapon itself. Okay, well, here's a fancy sword. An advanced blade issued to Elite Yorha. Yorha R&D Team Journal, August 29th. Held a progress report meeting for the new weapon. Considering how many observers we have from the other orbiting satellites, I can tell they expect a lot from us. Okay, December 10th. We had our first uh, core installation experiment today saw some troubling signs, including issues of unexpected irregular output and core perimeter defenses. And next one, the circuits of three consecutive staffers burnt out after attempting to remove the core's protection. I've requested replacement personnel. And a few days after, command pulled the plug on our project. The weapon will go into official operation with the core still sealed. Hmm. Okay, I guess that's just like a more, more like a weapon origin thing. Core installation. I wonder if this has any implications. Hmm. I don't know. Or maybe it's just like, you know, it's just a very experimental weapon. Well, here's a Type 3. This is the outdated version. Not the latest model, but proven in combat. 
The craftsmen's weapons were neither flashy nor attractive, but they never once failed in battle. This reliability afforded him a never-ending stream of loyal clients. Yet something nagged at the craftsmen. Though he'd forged many weapons, he only tested them on pigs and cows. He wondered what it might, might feel like to use them on another human being. The craftsmen, uh, craftsmen took a sword to the battlefield and slashed at the corpses. Disappointed at how easily the sword slid through them, it wasn't satisfying at all. He wanted to really feel like he was ripping through flesh. Mm. The craftsman modified a sword in search of that feeling, not thinking at all of the pain it would cause. Until one night, a bandit broke into his home, snatched the weapon up, and showed him exactly how effective it was. <laughs> it seems like all these places have bandit problems. Oh, he ended up being killed. And also, I guess, yeah, three androids also got killed experimenting on the Type 4 old sword. Seems like a lot of people just keep dying. So much people are dying. Here's a virtuous contract, a white sword carried by samurai. This is definitely like 2B's weapon of choice. So let's see. How long can I fight Mrs. Bloody Vortex of a battlefield? How long, I wonder. How long can I continue to protect what I love amidst this endless war? How long, I wonder. How long can I continue to believe in a world laden with deceit and folly? How long, I wonder. How long can I lie to myself as I despair at the dark future of this world? How long, I wonder. Okay, it's a little poem. I assume about, you know, Tubi's relationship with Ninus. Hiding the fact that she's his executioner. It's a no frills design. Okay, this is like 9S's sword. Huh? Okay, same image, actually, Tubi and 9S. Well, once long ago, there was a group of seven boys who were born in the same village. Though they were not brothers by blood, they treated each other as family. One cold night, a fortune teller appeared and warned of a traitor among them. The boys laughed it off and went about their business, but the next morning, one of them lay dead. Hmm. With each passing night, another boy died. The survivors grew more and more suspicious of each other, each harboring terrible doubts about what happened to their brothers. On the morning of the seventh day, a single survivor stood tall. Cleaning the blood from his hands, he chuckled to himself. Better go find the traitor. Okay, weird story. I assume this is a metaphor for 9S. You know, it's very similar to how in the end, 9S goes crazy as well. But maybe this is like a reference of how like 2B has been killing like a bunch of 9S models this whole time or something. Uh, Yorha issue blade. Standard issue. Given to all Yorha troops. What's this story? Let's see. Morning, listeners. It's time to kick off another installment of La Listener Letters. Lis Listener Letters with your favorite radio idol, DJ24D. Now let's get this day started right, shall we? How's it going, listeners? Yeah, I know. You're all still thinking about that cleanup operation yesterday, right? We may have lost a lot of good people, but it's still our job to get up and at them, all right? Howdy, listeners. Your favorite radio idol, DJ24D, hasn't been receiving many letters lately. Don't you like me anymore? <laughs> or maybe no one's even listening. <laughs> anyway, who's ready to kick things off? Hmm. Hello, is anyone there? Is this thing even on? It's me, radio listeners, 24D. I'm an idol, remember? An idol, an idol, an idol, an idol, an idol, an idol. Okay, all right. Well, that's another android who went crazy. I guess they wanted to be a radio idol. Actually, what was their designation? I believe it's 24D. Isn't D like Defender? Aren't you supposed to be doing something? You're supposed to be defending something? Why are you on the radio? I don't know. Uh, machine sword made from scraps. Okay. The more old records I read, the more fascinated I become by the species known as humans. We machines must do all, all we can to preserve these precious artifacts and continue to rec rec uh, record their contents. I see from these records how important uh, predation, predation? predation and reproduction were to human survival, and yet they view such acts as sinful. I wonder why. I found a famous human book today, but after reading it ten times, it, makes, it still makes no sense to me. What possible attraction could there be to such a thing? Eureka! It seems the answer was in front of me all along. I am simply incapable of comprehending anything about humanity or the world in general. Ah, how wonderful it is to live in a world swaddled in mystery. Okay, weird. I assume that's a machine. I thought it was 
you know, at first I thought it was Pascal, you know, finding a book and being interested in humans, but I don't know if that's the conclusion that Pascal would make at the end there. Mm. Oh. Iron Will. The blade is dull, its power comes from mass alone. Iron or human blood? Mm. You know, I believe the reason why human blood smells like iron is not because there's a bunch of iron in it, even though that could be a conclusion you could make, but more so the fact that blood, when it interacts with oxygen, you know, it makes a very similar smell to iron, but it's not really iron, I think. Something like that. Well, the sword's blade, dulled by years of idleness, was, as its name implied, a mere iron hunk. Its blood-drenched youth was a little more than a series of rusted memories which grated against its pockmarked steel. Who could wield this hunk of iron now that its edge was gone? Who might love it when all it could do was bash dully against a foe against a, instead of cutting through flesh and bone? Who would devote themselves to such insanity? The sword sighed softly, pleased to finally be at rest. But before it could peacefully crumble into dust, a group of power-hungry fools took it up and denied its very anew. Red rust was the weapon's tears. The blood, fat, and muscle it tore through was proof of its cursed. Now let it hew bone once more, let it ravage flesh, let it do all this and more as atonement for its sins. Okay? I mean, this one is more like an actual weapon story. The other ones are just stories somewhat related to the weapon and maybe sometimes not at all but this one's actual well, this story about the weapon itself hmm. uh fang of the twins hmm. well we didn't meet twins before the giant curse acts annoyed with the blood of innocent twins i don't know twin souls were sacrificed to twin gods and bound to an unbreakable dual bladed axe whenever nicked or damaged it would instantly repair itself the two blades would never part, they would be together for the rest of time. The souls in the blade yearn to be as one, to grow old as one, to fall in love as one. It is why we both love the same person. I am myself, I am myself. Look at me, look at me, give me love, give me love. Stop copying me, I'm not. We are together, we are one. Life or death, even if we kill our foes, even if we kill each other, our bodies will be as one for all time. Someone separate us. Oh god, please someone help M. Help me. But I guess not really me. I wonder how that's translated in Japanese, actually. Because I guess the idea is that there is no me. There's two me's, but who is me? I guess. Okay, another weird story. Weird, like, cursed story. Beast Lord! Cut down any who would challenge his authority. Once upon a time. There were three princesses, okay, a continuation of the princess story. The eldest princess was thought by all to be the most brilliant woman in the kingdom, and she soon sat upon the throne of her homeland as her queen. The new queen raised a mighty army to afford the endeavor, she taxed her people, and in turn they were given jobs in new factories created to support the war effort. People worked, money flowed, as the army grew strong, the demand for factories grew with it, and then the cycle repeated. More work, more money, more work, more money. The Queen's plan proceeded just as she had envisioned it. To further strengthen the kingdom, we were converted to machines to enhance our output in factories and the military. Our Queen in turn became the control system that rules us to this day. Uh, okay? Uh, weird. This, again, weird. Did I actually turn into literal machines? Is that how it is? But, I don't know. Are these like princesses a reference to the actual aliens that invaded Earth or something? I don't know. Maybe it's just something else. They got turned to machines. Weird. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a reference to the weapons factory we saw before, right? That's kind of exploring the DLC as well. Phoenix Sword. Made from Phoenix Feathers. Used by Temple Guards. One day, a hawk lost its way in the woods. Its proud wings soon grew weak as it tried in vain to find its way home. As death approached, a songbird took pity on the hawk and did its best to offer aid. Oh no, not the songbird again. The songbird slowly nursed the hawk back to health. The beautiful sight of the small white bird nestled in the elegant wings of the hawk soon made it envy, or made it the envy, of all the creatures in the forest. When the hawk was fully healed, it knew it was time to leave the forest. 
but before flying away, it promised the songbird it would one day return. In turn, the songbird gave the hawk one of its shining feathers as a token of friendship. How nice. As promised, the hawk eventually returned, but with a human in tow. Well done, said the human. These feathers will sell for a great price at the market. Then he slew the songbird in one blow and plucked his carcass clean. Damn it. <laughs> it never ends well. Uh, there's another story, let's see. Yep, elite weapon. Development Journal 0504 Takada. I've come up with an incredible idea, something no one has ever done before. I'm gonna start testing it out first thing in the morning. Okay, and then the boss turned out my idea of infusing metallic alloys and magical elements. Thrice damn fool, does he see how much money we can make from this? Another journal. Things aren't going well. My hair is falling out. I think it's the stress. I gotta find a way to make this project succeed and soon. And the last journal was made by Fujita. I looked over the data but couldn't work out the problem. I'm not giving up though. With Takada dead, it's up to me. I'm the only one who can carry on his work. Okay. It's like a weird cursed blade. Everyone keeps working on it and everyone keeps dying and losing their hair. Maybe it's a metaphor for like making games in general as a developer. I don't know. Uh, actually, oh, how did I end up there? That's weird. I was over here. I think I might have. Well, I might have like accidentally pressed left on the D-pad or something. Where were we? We did here. Did 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 did. Okay, Type Three blade. Durable, older model, time tested. The great sword was known for its intense pain it inflicted upon its victims. This is what drove the man to carry it despite its weight, for he knew it would make others fear him, and thus could he avoid needless conflict. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you better get an exorcist because everything in the inventory seems really cursed. Yes, it is. It seems like it is. Uh, the man's reputation spread for the village despite never having drawn the blade. Don't make him use that horrid weapon, the villagers whispered. The man sm uh, sm smiled at this, for he knew that the fear was the best path to peace. Ah yes, um, it's kind of like, well it's kind of like real life, it's kind of, what's it called? <sighs> what was it called? I, I forgot what the name, but... Deterration, I believe? Deter Deterration? You know, the idea that because everyone has nukes, you know, in the world, that nobody would be stupid enough to actually use the nukes, otherwise it would be mutually assured destruction, right? Is the idea, you know? I don't know. Well, soon the man had the craftsmen forge a host of similar weapons. He gave them to all the other villagers in the hope it would force people to solve conflicts with words instead of violence. And his plan worked for a while. Keeping all sides in check is simple when no one uses their power. But once that seal is broken, the end is nigh. Thus did the peaceful village transform itself into a living hell over the space of a single night. Oh, yes, okay. Well, that's, yeah. Obviously, that's... The scary part about the fact that everyone has nukes because if someone is stupid enough to actually use the nukes, we're all dead. So there you go. And that's real life. Virtuous Treaty. Alright. Let's not think about the fact that we might all die one day. Um, not yet sold by a single blood drop of blood. Okay, so another like weapon that to be used in the beginning as well. Uh, well, weird. First encounter with my lover. Failed to contact, with, uh, connect rather, with my lover. Far away went my lover. With death went my lover to eternity. Alright, now short. I mean, is this... I don't know, the background doesn't remind me of 2B. Maybe it's like a reference to some other, like, machine maybe that we fought or something? Hmm. I don't know. It could also be a metaphor for, like, 2B as well. Maybe she you know. She loves 9S, but she can't, so... She's ever... most... She's always, like, like, forever never be able to actually love 9S normally. She just has to kill him every time or something, is the idea. Stained Jet Black, Bloods of Year, Blood of Years of Conflict. I'll never forget the time we met. I knew ours was a love that would last for eternity. But even when by his side, his feelings were a mystery. It was painful not to know what he was thinking. So painful. When I was cl when I was close, I heard him. Yet being distant, heard him more. I finally found my place in life. 
a place where I'm as close as possible, yet eternally distant. Okay. Kind of like the other side of the story, you know, the Richard's treating cruel blood oath. Again, I don't know, maybe that's a reference to Nier, I don't, I don't really get that, but, but I feel like it's also a reference to like 2B as well, you know? Always close, always nearby, but never really is the idea. Machine Axe. Scrap Metal. Human fight, why? Why humans love? Why do humans band together? You, why are you alive? Okay. Another like short one. I guess those are thoughts by the machines as they became sentient, I guess. Monks carry this decorative lance made from phoenix feathers. Is this gonna be another story about a songbird? Legends tell of a mighty warrior who had no equal in battle. Granted immortality by a phoenix, he wandered from war to war, forever searching for ways to prove his strength. Eventually, the man's immortal body proved too much for his spirit, and he ran himself through, through with his own spear again and again. But each time he did, the wound closed over itself, leaving not even a scar. Hmm. He leapt from cliffs, threw himself into raging seas, and lit himself aflame, but nothing worked. And one day he slipped mercifully into unconsciousness and awoke centuries later to find a songbird on his chest. You have atoned for your sins, said the bird. If you wish me to free you from your solitary existence, I will gladly do so. The man wept tears of joy and whispered thanks to the gods before suddenly stomping the bird to death. What? But what? Why is it? What? Danny? Okay. Um... Well, I guess maybe the songbird, because I always reference the songbird. So maybe that's, well, I guess the songbird was the phoenix. You know, the, in the beginning it says the he was granted immortality by the phoenix. So that's why he killed the songbird, because the songbird was the phoenix, I guess. That's why he just suddenly stomped the bird to death. I don't know if he needed to do that necessarily, but okay. It was funny because he was immortal. Wasn't there like another immortal person, you know? Maybe you should have like hung out or something. Like two immortal beings. Probably. You wouldn't be so lonely if you're immortal. If you have like at least another friend who's also immortal. I don't know. Who knows. Beast curse. The spirit emblazoned with a bestial motif. Once upon a time, there were three princesses. Alright. The youngest princess was widely regarded as the ugliest woman in all the land. But her heart was gentle, honest, and pure. Hmm. Hoping to aid others in need, the youngest princess would travel to the fields to offer succor to peasants, but they would reject her kindness with cruel words. Or cruel words. The youngest princess knew her looks were driving people away, yet she kept donating her life to the service of others, figuring that the fault lied in her own lack of devotion. Day after day, this continued for years without end. The youngest princess died alone, curled in the back of a damp, wet alley. She was so ugly that no one had the courage to give her a proper burial. Instead, she rotted where she lay, turning ever uglier until she faded into the earth. Okay, so the more of the story, we are ugly, then you just die alone. Okay, alright. <laughs> Never good stories, I guess. Come on. I mean, I, I, sh sh wasn't she at least a princess, you know? Was, that, was she sh that ugly? That even her, like, social status was not enough for people to at least tolerate? I don't know. Uh, coming in between a mighty warlord and an ancient dragon. Hmm. I had a dream. A dream about the day we met. He was small, he was insignificant. He was weak, yet he hated the world just as I did. I decided to aid him, and he did the same for me. Thus was our friendship born. It wasn't perfect, of course. Mistakes were made along the way. Still, we remain friends. The blue wind that caresses their, these grasslands has a pleasing scent. I bring my cheek to his and he twitches, almost as if tickled. Then I spare my wings and let him ride me into the skies above. Hmm. Okay. I guess this is a story of a dragon, actually. I mean, this is like... At least this is nice? <laughs> no one died? Okay, good. You know, I'm thinking maybe this is a reference to Dragon Guard, actually. I know next to nothing about Dragon Guard, but I think it involves dragons, so that's probably like a Dragon Guard reference. 
Uh, Spear of the Usurper. A prince's body double used his spear to slay his liege and met his own fate in the same age. Mm. In a distant kingdom, there lived two princes. The son of the queen consort was clever of mind, but weak of flesh. The son of the king's second wife was dim-witted yet charming and quite gifted in the art of war. Which prince would succeed the throne? When news came down that the king had died in battle, the two men each declared themselves the next true king, rallying the people to take one side or the other. In the midst of this coronation battle, a third man appeared, claiming to be the prince. Bright, capable, and brave, he dispatched the two foolish brothers and went on to become a wise and just king beloved by all. Decades later, the king announced on his deathbed that he wasn't royalty at all, but in fact was the son of a commoner. Upon hearing this revelation, the people stormed the castle and hung their beloved ruler from the rafters. Okay. I guess that's the hypocr hypocrisy of royalty, I guess. Even though he was like a, the best king ever, just because he wasn't of blood, they killed him anyway. Hmm. Spear used by a prince's double. Though I guess, I don't know, is this related? The Because there's the details about this spear that said it was like a prince's body double. Hmm. This a leech. I don't know. Is that before or after this... Supposed commoner king, you know, became royalty. Uh, oh. Coral Lance. Amanda Guards. Advanced Spear. Hi guys, it's me, 42S, your favorite Yorha Squadron idol from North 12C Defense HQ. Okay, it's another idol. I'm here with the latest hot scoops on the front line, so let's get out there and do our best, alright? Go team! Hey ho, battlefield battle, uh, buddies! B battlefield buddies! I'm not gonna lie here, the current war situation isn't looking too optimistic, but we're expecting reinforcements from our opening satellite bases any moment, so don't give up yet! Glory to mankind! Mayday, mayday! This is Publicity Agent 42S from North Chelsea Defense HQ. Is anyone listening? Our facility has been completely surrounded by machines. I don't know how much longer we can. And then they die. Okay. That reminds me of like, you know, war propaganda. I guess that's the point, you know. It's like there's like actual employees in service meant to like, you know, keep the morale up. Uh, old fashioned but reliable. Type 3 Lance, okay. The unadorned lance pierces her foes with machine like accuracy. The grind of metal on bone in tandem with the pain and screams of her victims created sweet music in the mercenary girl's ears. Mm. Day after day, she returned to the battlefield to compose more music. Ah, yes, music. Here, a giant of a man, fat rippling from his size, there, a slimmer gentleman whose bones would surely produce a sweeter sound. Ah, uh, who to stab first? The girl fought for an age. Stabbing uncountable foes in an effort to find the ideal scream, that sonorous, bone-grinding sound. Yet perfection eluded her no matter how hard she tried. Would she ever find what she sought? Suddenly, she turned to find a fine-looking hunk of meat at her side. Stabbing it produced a scream so pure, she couldn't help but smile. She continued to smile as she stabbed, no longer able to recall that the hunk was her own child. Oh. What? Hmm. Okay. Alright. Just kill her own baby, alright? I mean, not baby, but like, I guess child, not baby. At least the baby grew up a little bit before she killed the. I don't know. But, but why? But why? What's this one? Pure White Spear? Used by a haughty samurai. The elegant white spear was crafted by a tyrant as a gift for his wife, whose parents he had killed years earlier. She slipped under the bed they shared, then later used it to run him through thirty times. Ah oh, yes, thirty times. Hmm. Uh, the spear's second owner was a courageous bandit-fighting mayor. In her later years, her strength faded, until one night a pack of young thugs surrounded her and took all that she had, including her life. Well, the third owner was a greedy merchant who lived to swindle customers. Soon she found herself shunned and penniless, and so decided to hang herself. 
the unused spear rested in the corner of her home as a decoration. The fourth owner was a meek young boy who wanted to aid his sickly younger sister, he gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. Well, I guess we might know how that turns out because it always ends up in tragedy. Though I think, I don't know, I think that's also a reference to the original Nier as well. Because I mentioned before, there were two versions of the original Nier, and one of them was about a brother saving his sister. So, there you go. Might be a reference to that. Um, Ruthless of a warrior who never knew mercy. The dark, hideous lance was crafted by a beautiful female artisan. As people far and wide praised his design, the artisan's apprentice grew jealous and slew her, the lance itself soon vanishing into the midst of time. The lance's second owner was a puppeteer who crafted the clockwork doll capable of doing nearly anything. When he put the lance in the doll's hand, she lashed out and pierced the puppeteer's skull right between the eyes. Hmm. Uh, the third owner was an infant prince who was gifted the lance by her queen regent. She dies soon thereafter, and on the night of the funeral, the lance vanished from the infant's room, leaving behind only a tiny corpse in the crib. <laughs> another, another one dead. The fourth owner was a simple, honest man who wanted to aid his sickly daughter. He gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. Okay, so another, yeah, okay, this is probably another reference to Nier. Another version of Nier involved, well, a father trying to save his daughter. So there you go. Two versions of Nier right there. But both of them ends in tragedy, so I can only imagine how the original Nier ended. Hmm. Machine Spear. A spear used by machine life forms, especially formed by or from scrap metal to destroy androids. Mm -hmm. My name is Plato, 1728. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this is not DLC, so I guess this is what the DLC is based off of. This weapon story, I guess. Unless maybe it's changed after you download the DLC or something, but... Anyway, my name is Plato, 1728. I'm a failure of a machine that was designed for combat, but I can't use weapons. Everyone makes fun of me, and my life is horrible. I'm a dumb machine. I got lost during battle and ended up in some kind of factory. I found a whole pile of dolls discarded there. They share the same fate I do. I am a foolish machine. Today I had to, f had to fight at the factory. All the dolls got completely destroyed. Crushed by my friends and foes who could do nothing but fight, fight, fight. I activated my cannon and shot everyone there. I'm not sure, sure why I did that. All I know is that I decided to fight. Because I'm just a stupid, broken machine. Okay, so that's kind of like a little bit more detail what happened to Plato. Activate his cannon, I guess. Somehow, he somehow had a cannon. Somewhere. Where did he hide it? I don't know. Angel's Folly. Weapons fashioned in parts unknown to resemble... Angel Wings. Once, there was a demon who held an affinity for angels. He dreamed of serving alongside them and their god, yet cursed the impossibility of it all. Then one day he came to earth, bring himself a step closer to heaven. An angel was sent to slay the demon. When the evil one saw his foe, he burst into tears and revealed his plan. Please, the demon begged, you must give me a set of white wings for my very own. The angel agreed to trade a set of white wings for the head of another demon. Overjoyed, the demon killed one of his own and plucked the head right off its still warm body. The angel then led the demon to heaven where he underwent centuries of the cruelest tortures imaginable. Finally, the pain was so great that he lost consciousness, at which point his dark wings turned the promised shade of white. Okay, alright, weird. How about the other side, I guess? Resemble the holy fangs of demons. Demons cry. Once, there was a gentle angel who came to earth to provide salvation for those in need. Whether it was curing illnesses, offering blessings or cheering the sad, he was always there when needed. The angel, however, provided aid to sinners and non-believers as well, an act which was strictly forbidden. Each time he did so, a single white feather would fall away from his glorious wings. One day, the angel came across a young girl with an illness that pained her deeply, but he could do no, nothing to help the child, for all his feathers had long since fallen off. 
the angel cursed both himself and the cruelty of the world. The resulting hatred stained his body and his wings, turning them both black as night. Then crying tears of blood, he brought his hands to the girl's neck. Okay. Mercy kill? Hmm. Well, I wonder, I guess the stories are interconnected. I guess the angel became a demon, and then another angel came by, I guess, and the demon begged for his wings because he wanted the wings to cure the child, even though he already killed the kid, I guess. Maybe he just wanted the wings anyway because he thought he needed it. Because that was his, you know, original goal, even though it's already been lost. I don't know, something like that. Hmm. Angel and demon. Typhoros Fist, introduced in AD, uh, you read this, 11,940. They have a lot of energy in them. System Yorha, unit data uploading, check out HC. Close uh, IO, duplicate, duplicate core, find Yorha unit, updating data, checking data, purge conversation log, purge unit data, purge system data, exit. Hmm. Interesting. You know, well, the last two lines there it kind of reminds me of maybe that what that's what happens when you like you know delete your save data actually. I don't know. Uh, old Yorha weapons, crude but reliable. The man wailed an inhuman scream as he brought his fist down on his opponent's skull. He brought it down again and again and again, and so the victim was nothing more than a splatter of blood and bits. The man had a beautiful wife that drove everyone wild with jealousy. They live a simple, happy life, yet the man always strove to keep his wife safe above all else. One night, the man came home to find a stranger in his bed. His wife told him that he had forced himself on her, at which point the husband flew into a rage and vowed to exact revenge. Hmm. The man brought a weapon from a craftsman famed for forging instruments of pain that used it to punish his wife for he could not abide that she failed to protect her virtue. His revenge was complete. Okay, well... I guess he didn't believe his wife, so he killed his wife. Well, I don't know. Uh, kept pristine. Hmm. I see you in my sleep. Restless sleep. My heart flies to pieces each time I wake. I burn to see you in the real world. I hunt for the woman who pines for you. The scream pleases me. Your body and heart shall be mine. Your heart, I long for it, yet it does not return my love in kind. All you care for is your cold, dead wife. So I must at least take your body. Your head is mine. Beautiful head. The eyes that scorn me are so lovely now. Hate me if you like. Begrudge me all. You are still mine forever. Okay. Reminds me of... An anime where someone takes the head of another. Nice boat, I guess. Uh, Samurai Gauntlets, Cruel Commander. I take up the sword and battle for you. My heart knows not fear. It's that burning of a love strong and pure. I swing my sword for you, splattering blood across my sleeve. I smile as the ki uh, chaos continues. I brandish my sword for you, victims uncountable. Victims beyond measure, their dying wails become the song of my sleep. Cry out, give me your head. I capture you as you flee and take it. I do all this for you. For you, for you. But who are you? Hmm, okay. I don't really understand. I guess these two are, in, are, in, are connected, you know. It involves taking someone's head, I guess. I don't know. Machine heads. Made by Head of Machines. I lack parts. I am useless. My existence is unnecessary. I tried. I tried so hard. Mommy. Okay. I assume that's one of the child machines actually. And we just use their heads as uh, fist weapons. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay, engine blade. I wonder what kind of story this has. It's, kind of like, I mean, it's just like a reference to another game. A small prince rests alone in a vast, vast bedroom. He wishes his father knew how much he hates sleeping alone, but he doesn't dare tell him, for the king is a very busy man and must not be disturbed. A king sits alone in his vast, vast office, drowning in affairs of state. 
All he wants is to see his family and hug his son, but he cannot, for his every waking moment must be spent in service of the people. One day, while eating dinner, the king asks his son what he most desires in the world. He hopes he will say that he wants them to spend more time together, but instead the boy simply points at a sword hanging on the wall. The ancient sword is considered the sign that one is ready to rule. Someday, the king chuckles. The son faintly smiles back at him. All he really wanted was for his father to read him a bedtime story. Okay. I assume again that's a reference to... One of the Final Fantasies, was it like Final Fantasy 14, was it? 15? 16? I don't know, I lose track. There's just so much Final Fantasies, I don't know anymore. It's a stick. Amazing. I was in a dead sleep when mom started shouting, Wakey wakey, she squawked, rise and shine. Today is a very important day. Today's your first visit to the castle. Annoying, right? But I got up anyway. Today's my 16th, uh, 16th birthday, and I have an audience with the king. Mom's apparently worried that he'll charge me with some big important task. She, so she gave me a zipper stick for some reason. <laughs> like that'll help. As we walk to the castle, Mom keeps blabbing about how we, how excited she is and how long she's been waiting for this day. She's told me this story a million, million one time, so I just keep quiet, like always. When we arrive, I see my friend coming out of the castle. He's 16 too, but his fearless gaze makes him look like a legendary hero to be. I'm sure he's got to live up to. My dad's just a carpenter, so I've got it easy. <laughs> okay, weird. Again, I assume this is, I mean, this is obviously a reference to the original Dragon Quest. You know, I mean, obviously I don't know much about Dragon Quest because it wasn't all that popular in the West, but Dragon Quest is uh, as popular as Final Fantasy actually as RPGs go. In Japan anyway, so there you go. I wonder what that means though. You know, maybe I'm re- I'm- Because I'm assuming every story is kind of like a tragedy, or at least kind of sad. Maybe this is kind of like a reference of how, like, there's a bunch of, like, Dragon Quest heroes, and there's, like, I don't know, his friend coming up the castle is kind of like, you know, he's also a hero protagonist, but he'll die, and you're next, you know? And maybe you'll be the actual hero. I don't know. Like, they've been going through, like, a multiple heroes and everything. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, a mule heads. Shaped like a mule. Okay, it's like a, like a journal. Uh, 12,422. I confirmed the machine life forms released by the aliens have reconstructed their network. I have started to see units with gravity controlling capabilities again as well. Okay. Uh, next month is I was spawned about a week ago, so I don't have clear recollections of anything be before that. Say, I wonder where the original disappeared all those millennia ago. Hmm. A few months after that, I confirmed that the 21th, uh, 25th one, born after me, has stopped his biological activity. Although we're technically immortal, since we can respond indefinitely and all, we're still not exempt from death. Okay, and the year after, our memories are only copies, so they're pretty vague. That android wearing black. I have the feeling I've met her before. She had a complicated look on her face, but I can't remember anything. Hmm. Okay. So I guess that's just, again, reference to Emil. How he's immortal, he can clone himself indefinitely, but I guess the memories don't really stay. Hmm. And there you go. I guess that's it. I mean, that's all the weapon stories. Just little tidbits of lore. Interesting lore. Some of, some of it is like probably over my head because of like references to something that I don't really know. But most of them are just like, they're just tragic stories, you know? Well, there you go. I guess I'll just save. Um, what else is there to do? I'm trying to think. I feel like that's it. At least in the game itself. Do 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 do. Just jumping around. I guess I'll read the epilogue now. I have to like open a, a website. Lore! Let's read some lore. More lore. Uh, so this is the page you get if you, uh, you know, after you beat Ending E, this is what they recommend you go to. The arc.wiki is where you go. And basically, Yoko Taro's a weird guy. He puts a lot of, like, side lore, you know, on, on his, like, other stuff. Such as, like, well, I don't know, 
plays, you know, actual like plays. Um, for example, I don't want to know which one this one. I forget which one. Oh yeah, it was one. There's a stage play for that one. There's also a stage play that basically details like A 2s the like, whole backstory. I probably won't go through all of them. You know, I don't know if there's is there like a video of the stage play itself. I don't know. I mean, there probably is somewhere on YouTube. There's also like little short stories about nine S's and um, two B's, like whole thing that uh, I probably won't do because you know they're just like little self-contained little stories and you know just random like tidbits, like I don't know, like the timeline for like near Automata as well, even an interview, even. But uh, what I'm what I'm interested in at the moment anyway is uh, let's see, I don't know. actually which one is it? <laughs> I forgot. Um. I think it's this one. Yeah, so like, like his he had like um live perfor- uh, performances, you know, near like music concert, obviously. Um, in between them, he also had like little short stories, right? That the voice actors actually read, and I believe which one's the epilogue? This one. So this is the epilogue after ending E right here. So this is the actual epilogue. So it's kind of weird, like you know, there's an epilogue that he just never put in the game. He just did it in the concert. I don't know. Yokotar was weird. Did I say that already? I I said that since the beginning of the game. He's a weird guy. And I guess, you know, you can like watch the video where the voice actors read the lines. It's probably a better experience, but you know, I kind of don't want to do that because it's a long video. I don't want to just watch like a video on stream. So I rather I rather just, you know, just read it myself. Not to say that I would do better, obviously not, but you know, I think it's a little bit faster if I just read it instead of the voice actors because it takes too long. I think it's like around 40 minutes, you know? Obviously, you should see it for yourself if you can, but for now, though, I'll just read the epilogue and that'll be it, though. Everything else is like a lot of like, you know, just like side material, obviously. That's what it's called. But uh, I guess I just want to know what happens. So, scene one, September 5th, pod 153, everything that lives uh, is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle. I wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. Hmm, Okay, I think this is a reference to the actual beginning of the game, actually, the prologue. That's what 2B said. Oh, September 5th. Unit 2B, vital signs confirm. Memory storage, thought circuits, auxiliary motor functions, all confirmed to have been restarted. Entering reboot sequence. Ugh. Good morning, 2B. I report. Unit 2B was killed by Unit A2 approximately 1,718 hours ago. 1,718 hours ago. So, 72 days then. Following that, us tactical support units reconstructed your parts. The virus previously inside your you uh, deactivated along with the tower's collapse and remains in suspension. Tower? What happened? To be suddenly realizes something. Okay. Uh, 9S. Report. Uh, oh, 153 is a different pod. Report. Unit 9S ceased activity approximately 740 hours ago. Pod 153. Unit 9S was severely contaminated. However, said virus deactivated along with the tower's collapse and remains in suspension. So he's just asleep. Negative. An error occurred during Unit 9S's reboot sequence. What do you mean an error? Unknown. Oh, it's like in Japanese, like fume or something like that. All checks were completed. However, his personal data will, will not begin loading procedures, causing an inability to reboot. His personal data won't load. Then in that case, run the monitoring sequence and skip the check sequence. Negative. This unit was already attempted 345 combinations 34,500,000 times. Or, no, that's wrong. 34... 1,500 times, and all have ended in failure. Unit 9S's current state suggests that there is a possibility his personal data has been lost due to some unknown cause. His personal data is lost. Proposal. Unit 2B should consider disposing of Unit 9S's body. He speaks in a strong tone. There's no way I could just dispose of his body. There's a considerable pause. (laughs) He's just reading the... Oh, you're not supposed to read these parts, but anyway. Understood. Okay. After being reconstructed, there wasn't even a hint of dirt on 9S's body. His face looked just like he was sleeping. 
I took my weapon in hand and packed the minimum necessary provisions before standing up. I had to go. There had to be a way to get 9S to reboot properly. That's what I believed. Okay, so she starts her journey to reboot 9S. Second scene. I received information on what happened while I was gone from the pods, about A2 and 9S. I also heard about how the two of them destroyed some huge tower that had been created by the machine life forms. The rubble from it is still scattered all throughout the city. The city ruins landscape had been completely changed. Proposal. Unit 2B should gather information at the resistance camp. The resistance camp was able to miraculously avoid damage from the collapse of the tower. However, Devola and Popola and a few others in the resistance lost their lives in the fight of the machines. Okay, so the twins are dead. Even though Anemone was faced with such a difficult situation, she still remained level-headed. I tried speaking to Anemone about the situation with 9S's rebooting, but she wasn't able to provide me with any helpful information. Report. Relevant records within the bunker have been lost. We or her units are a special type. We contain something other androids don't within us, a black box. And due to that, we're capable of much higher functionality. However, unlike general androids, our maintenance is only able to be done on the bunker. It's possible to make easy repairs with a small amount of materials and programs at access points, but detailed information about the insides of our bodies was lost along with the fall of the bunker. Even so, I was traveling from place to place, looking for the information I needed, no matter how long it took. Alert! Unit 2B is taking damage due to maintenance failure. Proposal. Unit 2B should perform proper repair and replenish materials. With how tired I was, even doing simple first aid felt troublesome. In the depths of my heart, I started to feel like everything I was doing was meaningless. I don't care anymore. I wonder if 9S will ever wake up. That sort of dark thought process began to take over. Or, uh, that sort of dark thought process began to take over. And I shook my head. I couldn't give up. I couldn't give up. I couldn't give up. Even if I was deceiving myself, I couldn't admit that. It caused my body to become heavy. If I go further away from here, I may be able to find surviving Yorha members. Report. Nail notification received. Okay, it's just like part of the game. Huh? Like I did the. I find it funny how the paws always just speak, as they always do, you know, in the game. Uh, check it. Okay. Sender, jackass. Subject, about 9S's personal data reboot. Yo, how's it going, 2B? <laughs> I know a little something about 9S's condition. I've been looking through a lot of things since everything happened and came across some concerning information. There are some logs remaining in the access port outside of 9S's memory storage. There were, uh, they were a communication record from the ARC object those machine life forms made. I don't know anything about that ARC thing, but it might be some sort of server. I will send you the time and coordinates that were written in that log right away. There must be a hint somewhere in them. This concludes the body of the email. Time and three-dimensional coordinate data is attached. Those coordinates, right in the area where the tower collapsed. You know, this could have this really could have just been a side quest. You know, actually in the game, but I guess not. Uh, let's see. Scene three. Mountains and mountains of white rubble, as far as I could see. I arrived at the center where the co tower collapsed. Uh, and it was there where I began digging. Hypothesis. Origin point is 40 meters below the current point. Proposal. Search for a more efficient method of digging. <laughs> That's right. Coordinates Jack has sent me pointed right to a location within the tower's rubble. I was digging through it so I could reach the position it gave me, but the material was much more firm than I expected it to be, and my digging wasn't going particularly well. My breath began to show, and before I realized it, it was snowing. It seems the tower's rubble was absorbing the surrounding area's heat and causing the area to cool. According to the pods, it was made of materials derived from the bodies of life forms, which centered around silicon among other things, but that didn't matter. I only cared about my digging. Hypothesis. Origin point is 25 meters below the current point. Alert. Unit 2B is taking damage due to maintenance failure. The tower's materials became increasingly firm the further down I went. I was using my weapon to dig, but I had to stop using my one-handed sword to switch to something better suited, and I proceeded uh, downward by crushing the materials. I continued on, my mind devoid of any thoughts until I finished. 
I could feel an ache run through my pain sensors. It was only thanks to the pain that I was able to keep my sanity. Hypothesis: Origin point is 12 meters below the current point. Alert: Unit 2B is taking damage due to maintenance failure. Alert: If no pro、uh, proper repair is performed, it will cause severe impact to the unit's body. Oh, two bees can continue digging. Are you sure, are you, sure you don't want to like a, a shovel? No. Okay. As I continued to dig, I found out what that arc really was. It seemed to be a huge memory unit made by combining complex crystals. However, as it had been shattered to pieces, I couldn't find a single living crystal. Regardless, I continued digging in search of the arc's crystals. With each swing of my weapon, blood began to scatter. I couldn't feel my fingertips anymore, and the sensors running from my wrists had died. The balls I used to forcibly fix it were starting to dig into my skin, but that didn't matter. Somewhere up ahead, the information I need to save Nine S was, even if only a little remains of the Ark. I, I have to. Error sound. <sighs> Alert! Unit Two B entered for shutdown due to overload. Okay. Meow. Next scene. Emergency nano machine removal complete. Unit 2B's vital signs confirmed. Entering reboot sequence. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, good morning, 2B. Huh? I. You entered the forced shutdown due to severe continuous operation. When I hurriedly asked about the arc, the pods showed me a small orange sparkling crystal. What they found seemed to be a remnant of the machine life forms communication protocol. If we use that protocol and its data, we could create a key and open up 9S's memory storage. Although I didn't understand the details, there is meaning in my continued digging. The pods siphoned out the data and recombined it to create a repair vaccine. Then we could pull the cable from 9S's access port and create it、uh, and create a wired connection. With that, I'd be able to insert the repair vaccine. After that, all I have to do is hope that 9S's memory storage data could be evacuated into his personal data. Repair vaccine injected. Three seconds later, the sound of a harpy stops and a flatline beeps. Beep. No effect. Remastering repair vaccine. Nope. No effect. Remastering repair vaccine. Nope. No effect. What? What? Why is it? Hypothesis. Repair vaccine is a failure. Negative. Repair vaccine's functions confirm to be normal. Try it again. Administer. Administer it to him again. And then nope. Just like a flatline. Me. No effect. Try again. Report: Traces detected indicating the memory region of Unit Nine S's contents have been erased. Negative. It is an effect of the repair vaccine. Hypothesis: Unit Nine S's personal data has been lost. His personal data is lost. His personal data was wiped of his own accord, but there is the possibility it was moved to a different location. According to Unit A Two's records, it is possible to hear his data evacuated using the machine life form's arc. Report: Possibility of recovering Nine S's、uh, personal data extremely low. SP? I don't know what that means. What does SP mean? Probably means something I don't know. Uh, oops. Open the wrong window. In the background. Anyway. No. Beep beep beep. Report. Memory components discovered within the traces of personal data. Partial playback possible of memory containing the reason behind his personal data's reparation failure. Query: Does Unit 2B feel it necessary to repair this memory component? Repair it. Understood. Data repair complete. Starting playback. Okay, and then his voice starts to play back. Sounds like a radio in suffering. I didn't get on the arc created by the machine life forms. We Yorha. We don't deserve to be loved by this world. We're just soldiers created to die. But I think I'm glad that I was born as myself. My personal data—it can't keep its shape any longer. I wonder if I'm about to disappear, but I'm okay with that. Okay, that's actually the—that's the line that we get in the game, actually, near the end when、um, when、uh, Nine S, you know, I guess dies. And everything. It's the ending. That, I believe it's ending D, right? Ending D. Where like you know he stabs A two and A two kind of like stabs him back. They both just both die. Well, two B begins crying without making a sound. Well, hey, two B, we're we're not immortal or anything. Someday we'll break down and return to the earth. But my existence, it wasn't meaningless. 
Meeting you gave meaning to my birth. Thank you. Thank you. And then it becomes hidden by static. And nines. Two B didn't move from where she was. She remained there, unmoving forever. It was a completely irrational act. However, we can now understand the reason behind it. Why it was that Two B didn't move, and why it was that she didn't speak? Because we are now in that same place, feeling the same thing. Everything that lives is designed to end. They are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. However, life is all about the struggle within this cycle. That is what we believe. Okay, that, that's all right. Still ends up being sad, but okay. I mean, not like I expected anything else. Not like I expected anything else. Well, there you go. That's the ending. 9S never wakes up. 2B is just sad forever and just like, you know, stays there forever until she breaks down into the earth. I wonder what happens to A2 though. I guess it just never explained. I don't know. A2 goes on to live a happy life. Don't worry about it. She like, you know, gets with, the, gets with an M&A and they have like a family. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. In the end, I guess it doesn't really matter. They all just die. Oh. Meh. Why is why is Near Automa such a sad game? Oh well. It kind of reminds me though, like you know, two B just like sitting there forever. Kind of reminds me of uh, the king actually, the king in the Forest Kingdom. You know, they also just like died. You know, standing there forever. Oh well. There you go. That's the game. In the end, everyone dies. That's the moral of the story. We're all going to die. Death is inevitable. Oh well. Like, even if you're immortal, you'll still end up dying. I don't know. According to the weapon stories, anyway. I guess that's near automata. I guess there's one more thing I can do. Yosuke Matsuda. I fought him in the game. And there you go. Mm. I think this was echoed in epilogue as well. This is basically what they said, you know, in the ending there. In the game as well. This is what we believe in. Is that's it? I don't know. I'll skip this. I already, already saw this, you know. I was wondering why there were like multiple versions of those pawns as well. I guess it never explained. Yes. Uh, well, well, my message is different. I want, I'll, I'll give the same message I said before. Let's see. Uh, glory to mankind. Uh, you can just put down the controller, turn the power off, it's meaningless. Uh, I feel finger cramp. Okay, I think it's like... Hmm... Which one was it? Tomorrow's Monday. Oh, it was this one. Are you at your wit's end? Yeah. This one. That's the message I want to say. It's a kind of a long message. It might be like cut off on the screen when it shows up in other players' games, but there you go. Are you at your wit's end? Despite this, can you avert your eyes and walk away? It's kind of like, you know, you're this far already. Might as well finish it. Yeah, I found it. Anyway, I wonder if the message goes through if you decline to cooperate. I don't know. Well, probably not. Finish.
君に弱き者たちを助ける意思はあるか Yes この選択肢を選ぶと君は世界の誰かを救うことができるだが代償としてすべてのセーブデータを失うだろうそれでも見ず知らずの誰かを助けたいと願うか Yeah I've done all I can So I'll sacrifice my save data Why not? Well, if it's a. I mean, my logic is that if it's a complete stranger, then who cares? I don't know them anyway. So, like. Sure. Whatever. Take my help. Yeah. I mean, I never use much of debug mode anyway. Sure. You really. Really sure about this? Yeah, I am. I'm, I mean, I'm probably not gonna return to this game anyway. It's gonna sit on my hard drive collecting dust, so I might as well add something to it. It's, it is kind of cool, you know? You kind of like put your message out there, even though it's like a very small thing and probably no one will remember your name really. Um, it kind of like, you know, it's kind of like you put yourself in the game for like all the other players who reach this point as well. That's kind of cool. And I'm sure there's a way where you can like copy your data or something, go to your folder and, you know, make a, like a copy or whatever. But eh, that kind of defeats the point, you know? So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let the game delete it. Goodbye. Goodbye, 100% quests. Goodbye, level 86. All these items. All my plug-in chips. All my 100% weapons. Even my hands. Even my bare fists are gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I am gonna format my hard drive, actually, so... Goodbye! So actually, well, technically, you know, even if you format your drive, the Steam Cloud will keep your save. It's only if you do it this way will, you know, the save be gone. Forever. No, my saves. Ah. Uh. Well, it's gone. Zen data no sakujo, kanryo. Kore de o akare da. Sukoshi. For the glory of mankind. There you go. And my data's gone. Eey, oh, and a new, like, little, like, main menu. I guess it's to like represent that you've deleted all your data. Now there's nothing left. It's just empty. I believe isn't that like uh two B sword and uh nine S's like little bag, I guess. There you go. I can start a new game. <laughs> but But that'd be it, yeah, I guess that's it. That's near automata. There you go. I've done a lot of things. More than I thought I would. Actually, because I found the lore interesting. I mean that's Kind of part of the cool thing about Nier, actually, because, you know, I found the, the main story kind of cool, but I was just finding a lot of little tidbits of lore, interesting to find and everything. I like that. I like games that have lore that you find on your own and they uh, give you little things about the world that's cool to learn about, you know? Like, compared to, like, other games, you know, other, other types of games that have lore, because I don't like every game that has lore. You know, for example, like, I don't know, 
and this might be an unpopular opinion, but like, you know, games like uh, the Elder Scrolls, you know, Oblivion and Skyrim, you know, there's technically lore where you can like read books in the sto- in the game in the in the game world. It's kind of cool, but it's just not for me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess the difference is that Nier is just the lore is much more. I guess law less long-winded. I guess I don't know something like that. I can't really put it into words, but I, I like this type of lore better than the type of lore where you just read a book or listen to like a, a radio conversation, you know? Like in a lot of modern games where they just like feed you lore through like someone speaking through a tape or something. But anyway, I like it. I'll probably do a little bit more reading on the, the ARC wiki as well. A little short stories about Ninus and 2B maybe later on. There you go. Near Automata. It's um... No, well, it's kind of weird, but also good, I guess. That I mean, that's the feeling I get from it. It's weird, but it's good. There you go. And also, it helps that Platinum Games uh, was in charge of the combat as well, you know, because Platinum Games are very good at making, you know, action games, so that helps. Alright. I guess that's... I don't know, is there anything else I want to say about Nier? I mean... Character... Character design... Everything about Nier is just good. Music... Character design, a lot of things are good about it. That's all I can say, really. It's just good. It's good. It's very, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. The only, I mean, I, do I have any critiques against Nier? I mean, obviously there was some, there was some like uh, PC port stuff, but I mean that's technical. It's kind of bad. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I guess, I don't know, I feel like, I mean, the game is not short, especially if you, do, if you do all the extra stuff, but somehow I feel like, for some reason, I feel like I want to do more, I don't know. You know, maybe I want to play more, like, of A2, you know? You only get to play as A2 in the second half of the game and everything. I wish you could do more, you know? But, eh, oh well. I guess it's fine. If there was ever a sequel, maybe there would be, I don't know, probably not. I, I feel like Yoko Taro is the type of person that wouldn't do like a direct sequel but if there ever was maybe a2 would be like a main character you know plays a2 some more i don't know yeah i did mention there are like i don't know because i mentioned before like i wanted more one-on-one boss fights but there's there's a few you fight adam and eve and everything i guess i wanted more like a more conclusive boss fight i don't know because i think like uh, but again i don't know i don't i don't know because I think like, when I when I think like action game, I think of this like cool scene where you're fighting like a person that's kind of like your rival or something, you know. I, I think a lot of platinum games do that. Where you fight like a like a strong rival or whatever. But I guess you kind of do that with Ninus and A2, I guess, sort of. Eh, I don't know. Anyway, in conclu- in conclusion, Nier Automata is great. Uh, the theme, the theme of the game, though, is like every, every, everyone dies, though. So that that kind of leaves like a like a, a, a slight bad taste in my mouth. But you know, whatever. It's kind of it fits. It's the theme. Even the epilogue, even though it ends in a tragedy, that's the point. You know, eh? I still like it. Well, I like the fact that it isn't just a happy ending. I I, I, I wish it could be you know just a slight hope for something else, but. Oh well, that's fine. Anyway, enough rambling. I guess uh, that was it for Near Automata. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then. その
すべての存在は滅びるようにデザインされている生と死を繰り返す螺旋に彼らは囚われ続けているだが私たちは諦めないもしこの世界に呪いが満ちていてももしこの世界が罰を与えようとその輪廻の中で私たちは抗い続ける祈りの言葉を歌いながら。